With the imminent release of World of Warcraft Legion, we leave behind the disaster that was Warlords of Draenor. And I say disaster because when Blizzard stops reporting on subscriber numbers because they've gotten so low, the vanilla was is beating current. Uh, the early part of vanilla, the first year of vanilla, had more subscribers than what WoW has right now. Then that's a pretty bad situation for the company, for the game in particular. Now Blizzard has branched out, they no longer depend on World of Warcraft, but the situation's pretty bad for it. And keep in mind, World of Warcraft doesn't have any real direct competition. Yes, there's others, MM, other MMOs that have their own niches, that have their own audiences, that have their own appeal. But World of Warcraft doesn't have any game that's capable of directly competing with it. Closest that got to it was Wildstar. The problem was that Wildstar had nothing going for it outside of the raid gameplay, which was great. The dungeon gameplay was great, the raid gameplay was great, but everything else, the lore, the quest, the story, the universe, the magic, all that stuff of the world, didn't work. It, was, it fell flat on its face in every single department outside of dungeon and raid gameplay, and that's just simply not enough to carry a game. It really isn't. I mean, if you could make a game that had the that had a great story, that had the great universe, that had the magic in that universe, with the raid game, the raid and dungeon gameplay, you would make a great MMO. But there simply isn't anything on the market right now. Guild Wars, or the people behind Guild Wars, might go in that direction eventually, but they're not quite there yet. Anyway, so that's just how the situation on the market is. Why did Draenor specifically fail as an expansion? Well, outside of raid, uh, raiding, when we're looking at dungeons, when we're looking at quests, when we're looking at leveling experience, story, lore, universal, all that, the premise in itself was retarded. So any story that goes with the idea of time travel as a plot gimmick that doesn't delve, dive into that, that doesn't make it the central part of the story is doomed to fail. I mean, they did talk about it, they did explore that to a small extent, but that was really it. It's just a plot gimmick to go back in Outland before it was Outland. And instead of dealing with the Horde of Warcraft 1, you deal with the Iron Horde. A couple of problems with the Iron Horde, besides the gimmick of time travel. Uh, they could have had the cool factor, they could have had nostalgia. Oh, Blackhand, Ogrim Doomhammer, if they hadn't killed them off as idiots, because they had a whole plot line with him uh, in the north. And uh, then it's like, oh, we'll remove that for the Rexar plotline, the Gladiator plotline, the plotlines they eventually implemented there uh, near uh, the Blackrock Foundry and basically cut out a lot of Doomhammer's story and then they decide to kill him. Dorotan, uh, Grom Hellscream, Ner'zhul, all of that stuff. They had a lot of potential here. And then they didn't focus on the characters as they should have, and because people complain, oh, too much orcs, too much orcs, it's like they decided to focus on storylines and no one gave a fuck about. Uh, they, like, the Draenei are not really as popular as Blizzard might think. It's like, the Draenei have been considered a joke since they've been introduced, the space goats, as people call them, and rightly so. There's one retarded part of Burning Crusade, that, well, there's more, more than one, but that, the introduction of the space goats, that was one of the crowning failures of Burning Crusade in terms of story. There's other things uh, in terms of that, in terms of the things Burning Crusade screwed up with. But by the way, Burning Crusade, phenomenal expansion. It has issues. In every part of WoW has issues. Vanilla, Burning Crusade. But the point I'm making here is, oh, let's focus on Ural. Let's not focus on Karg of Bladefist. Let's not focus on Ner'zhul as we should. And they didn't. And that's kind of one of the reasons it fell apart, because they didn't focus on the cool factor. They had hype, they had marketing, they had the largest number of subscribers returning to the game, or players returning to the game, in the game's history. And then they failed so miserably. Why? Because the cool factor wasn't there, the story was retarded, the lore was retarded, the whole Iron Horde aspect fell flat on its face, to the point that I'm actually glad that we didn't end up fighting Grom Hellscream as the final boss of the expansion. People are saying, oh, how can we just turn around and ally him? It's like, do you really realize just how retarded and stupid the original storyline was? And Frawl's just there to look nice and kill Garrosh. That's it. That's the role Frawl plays. 
his wife, his mother actually, Draga plays a bigger role, Dregfar plays a bigger role, Durodan plays a far bigger role. So obviously there's character, there's characters that are thrown away, Frawl included, a lot of the chieftains that they put on the cover of the game thrown away. So you have a problem there on the story, on a lore level, and then you have the questing, uh, the gameplay actually, the gameplay of leveling WoW is boring as hell why because in the past when we're when i say past burn crusade vanilla specifically you can just go and slaughter hundreds of mobs without uh with ease you without stopping you actually had to take your time to think things through how do i approach a cave a cave because there's because if i pull more than maybe one two mobs i'm dead and i and my HP doesn't regenerate all that fast, I have to worry about bandages, I have to worry about food, I have to worry about mana if I'm playing class with mana. I have to worry about all these things or I'm playing a rogue. But even then you still had to worry about how you'd approach a situation. You don't have to care about that, the gameplay is pathetically easy. It's... The, the, the old style of gameplay was something more similar to Dark Souls than anyone would probably believe, anyone else would probably believe. And since a lot of enemies in Dark Souls are very simple, they are very simple in terms of their mechanics, but it's... that doesn't matter, because they're, you have to actually pay attention to them, because they can kill you, even the simplest enemies can kill you, despite their simple attacks, they can kill you if you're not careful. And you have to take your time, or you can rush through it if you so desire, if you're brave enough to do it. You can just rush through old World Warcraft, well, you could in certain situations, depending on your class, depending on your spec, depending on your level. You could, absolutely. Uh, but it was always a risk. You were taking a calculated risk. Now you put no thought in it. And the story doesn't hold up. It's not an interesting story. As I said, time travel bullshit plot line gimmick. And it doesn't have the cool factor that uh, they, it should have. So... Questing falls flat on its face because it's too easy and you're just smashing your way for opponents. You can't soak in the world, you can't appreciate the charm of the world. That was one of the things that worked in the past with Burn Crusade Vanilla. Uh, on top of that, there's no social experience. You're playing basically a shitty single player RPG. There's far better RPGs that you can play. Dragon Age, Ma Witcher, Mass Effect, name it! Death Sex! No, the Deus Ex game coming out. There's so many games you can play that offer a much better experience than what World of Warcraft does. And one of the main appeal, uh, one of the things that appeals with an MMO is the social aspect. But there's no reason to socialize with anyone in the open world because you can do it all on your own. You, In the past, you were encouraged to group up with people and you do so. Here's a player doing the same quest I'm doing, killing the same mobs I'm doing. I'm gonna group up with him, partly because we don't want to fight over mobs, partly if it's a quest where we have to kill X number of mobs, partly because it's easier, because dealing with mobs on your own could be a, tr a real bitch in Vanilla and Burning Crusade. So you'd group up with people just to help you out, just to work together, right? And you'd eventually talk with people, you'd socialize with people. That's just no longer the case in World of Warcraft. They've gone from something, say, in Vanilla and Burning Crusade, something, say, similar in a sense to Dark Souls, to a shitty single-player RPG. And on top of that, they're focusing on the spectacle. So it's either a shitty single-player RPG, or it's them trying to do Call of Duty spectacle, which... In both cases, they fail. They fail at being good single-player RPG. They fail at making a spectacle compared to Call of Duty. They just, they just don't. Do, they're not capable of doing it. Simple as that. Their storytelling is pathetic. Their questing is pathetic. There's, look, Star Wars: The Old Republic is a better game in terms of leveling because it actually has story interactions. It has decisions in that story by Bioware, and that's a shitty MMO on every other level except that. But because it does have those interactions, because it does have the dialogue, because it has some actual thought put into its story instead of the retarded crap we get in WoW, it's better. It's a much better experience in terms of leveling. And an open world, actually. On top of that, Blizzard removed flying to try and improve the open world experience. Great! 
except they nullified any advantage that might give in terms of making the open world more interesting by basically making... Oh, here's teleportation from point A to point B every time you need it. Here's faster uh, flight paths. So I was like, what's the point? What does it add? Nothing. Zilch. Zero. Not. And then that's just leveling. You get to max level. What do you have to do? Nothing. Except a weekly quest, a unique quest when you run out of them eventually. The daily Apexis quests, which are completely bloody irrelevant and don't add anything. And probably most people didn't give a damn about that. The garrison quest line and then their legendary quest line, which is time gated anyway, dependent on you doing raids. Uh, like the first parts you can do and then you have to get X number of resources from the raids in order to continue that. So you don't have anything to do once you get max level outside of garrison and quests that you quickly uh, finish doing outside of the stuff in terms of legendary quest line or the weekly quest that you have to wait a week to be able to continue the the garrison campaign that is so you don't really have a lot to do as in whereas in the past you did have a lot to do when I gained max level in vanilla you know what I had to do I had the plague lands before me I had uh, the Ankir the quest near Ankiraj in Silophus. Uh, I had uh, in Ungoro Crater. Uh, I had uh, the attunement quest lines for various instances. I had the quest lines for to get the keys for various instances. Like the attunement people bitch and moan. It's like, oh, we shouldn't have attunement quests. Like, they added so much to the world. They made you give a damn about the instances you were doing and their understanding exactly what you were dealing with. Like, same uh, same situation in Burning Crusade as in Vanilla. You had epic quest lines. You had Shadow Moon Valley, which was basically a max level zone with chock full of quests. Uh, then you had Nether Storm. You went, in theory, there were not max level zones because you could enter them before them and do quests. But in reality, you would probably, if you did some instances, you'd get max level somewhere in Nagrand or Blade Edge, uh, Edges Mountain. And then you would have Nether Storm in Shadow Moon Valley. And then you had the tournament quest, reputation grinding, five men dungeons on normal. Forget heroic, normal. You didn't, didn't just do. You didn't just get max level as you do right now and jump into heroic dun dun dungeons. You didn't do heroic dungeons unless you had people that were capable of raiding, that had some raid gear. Well, with the exception of maybe one, two heroic dungeons. That was the case in Burning Crusader dungeons. The normal versions you did leveling and then uh, you had the max level dungeons, five man dungeons, and then you had the heroic dungeons which were, well, some of them were doable with weaker gear, others were like, either come back here with full, with almost full tier 4 or a good chunk of raid gear or get the hell out, because you're not gonna do shattered halls heroic with blue gear, that wasn't gonna happen, at least initially, and it worked. That worked uh, because a lot of the dungeons were made for leveling uh, and those that were made for max level, well, they were far more difficult on heroic than they were on normal. Like perhaps the difference between LFR and heroic raiding at the moment. That's kind of like the gap that existed before then. And it worked. It was fine uh, because of that. When Blizzard now, what Blizzard does in terms of dungeons is like the five men normal versions are pathetic, you just go through them, smash through them with ease without any real thought. The heroic versions are also pathetic, they're just max level versions of the same dungeons, but they're just as easy as the leveling versions. So, there really isn't much to offer in terms of the dungeons in, in Warlords of Draenor, there isn't anything really to offer in terms of the questing. Especially once you get max level. So what is there? Nothing. And that's why the game failed. Because the stuff that you have to do outside of raids in PvP, terrible. Quite frankly, terrible. There's any other, uh, any number of single player RPGs there that are better. There's spectacle games, like there's Call of Duty that do spectacle better in terms of cinematics, in terms of special effects and all that. Um, there's even MMOs. If you want something for a good questing, leveling experience, story experience, play Star Wars The Republic. It's a better game on that level. Far better game. I've been playing World of Warcraft since vanilla. I didn't play it through other experience, but I've played through periods in every expansion. Wrath of Lich King, Cataclysm, Miss Pandaria, and Warlords of Draenor. I played earlier on in Warlords of Draenor before Hellfire Citadel quit because it got really boring. And now 
I'm back because I'm interested in seeing what on whether or not Legion will fall flat down its face. I, and based on what I played in the beta, I think Legion will be an improvement to Draenor, but it will also fail miserably because they're, they're sticking with the same formula. And this brings me to raiding. The problem with raiding, as is right now, is the fact that ever since Blizzard introduced raiding difficulties, like initially it was uh, challenge modes for bosses, like you would do a boss in a certain way and you'd, do, uh, you'd get the challenge. Like Surfarian uh, Free Drakes as an example, that was their real first uh, challenge mode. Or all those in Old War. The problem was ever since they did that, and then in Trial of the Grand Crusader, considered the worst raid Blizzard ever made where they properly introduced heroic raiding. Now you have Mythic, which is you know, which is just as difficult as heroic used to be, and normal is then heroic, and flex, which they introduced the Siege of Ogremar, is l less uh, challenging than um, than heroic. Uh, when they introduced uh, those challenges, the problem was that there were some bosses that were really improved, that they had a lot to offer, that they were interesting to do on. A challenge mode on a heroic mode and then there were many other bosses which were a joke that didn't change enough to make them interesting and you're basically in and you end up in a situation where you're doing the same boss that you did previously just with a, sw a few tweaks and that's one of the things that i've always hated about heroic raiding that's one of the reasons i never st stood for it or like as an example i came back for cataclysm uh, towards the end of Wrath of the Lich King, and in Cataclysm, initially, with the dungeons, with the leveling, all that, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it greatly, it was a great time. But then, once I did everything in terms of dungeons, and I killed every boss on normal, all I had to do was heroic raiding, and I quickly grew bored of it, because a lot of the bosses weren't, were barely any different, or are, you, or are people going to argue that Halfus Worm, Wormbreaker is such a different boss? Or uh, on heroic versus normal. I mean, yes, it's more challenging, but it's it's still the same boss. It's still the same instance. You're just doing the same shit you've done before on a higher difficulty, and that's simply not interesting. It's not something that's gonna keep people interested. And that's the problem with raiding. People latch on to LFR and say that's the cancer that's ruining raiding. No, raiding difficulties are ruining raiding for a couple of reasons. It gets repetitive and it allows Blizzard to get away with doing less raids. You know what was great about Vanilla and Burn Crusade? You had far more raids, far more bosses, far more diversity in terms of the areas you're going into. Take for instance Vanilla. What did you have? You had Molten Core, Anixia, Zulgurub, Blackwing Lair, Ankirage, 20 and 40. So, in total, I'm talking here six raids. And then Naxxramas. Oh, by the way, Upper Blackrock Spire. Just so we don't, we don't ignore that. That was a raid as well. So, you had eight raids. And I'm not even going to count the bosses. Because if I start counting the Ankirage 40 and 20 bosses, then... <laughs> That's gonna take a while, it, or let alone the next Ramas bosses. There were a lot of bosses, there were far more raids than we get right now. Burning Crusade! What did you have then in terms of raids? Karazhan, McFerridan's Lair, Gruul's Lair. And you might say, oh, those are just one, two raid uh, raids, right? Uh, one, two boss raids. Yeah, but they were different. They were different areas. They looked different. Uh, the, the design of the raids... You know, it had a different feel versus what you were dealing with. And by the way, Gruul's Lair and McFerridon's, that was just tier 4. Car Nowadays we just get something that's less than what we got in Karazhan. Karazhan is considered one of the best Raid Blizzard ever did because of the atmosphere, because of the lore, because of the story that went into it. The bosses themselves kind of left a lot to be desired, to be honest, if you look back on it. But it was a very enjoyable raid. Uh, even today, it, it Karazhan has great atmosphere, great design. So, free raids tier 4, right? Tier 5, Tempest Keep, Serpent Shrine Caverns. Tier 6, Mount Hyjal and Black Temple. And then Sunwell. And then Zulaman. The point is, we had a lot more raids and more bosses. 
in total. Different bosses, different areas, different design. Far more on our plate, far more content to deal with. And you didn't just gain max level and had nothing to do. You had the tournaments I mentioned, you had the five-man dungeons, you had five-man heroics. It took time. You could be playing World of Warcraft for months in Vanilla and Burning Crusade, even in Raft to an extent. You're going to be playing for months and not finish the initial content at that expansion's launch. Let alone the content that they offered later. So, uh, Isle of Quetel than us. That was that was far more content in that patch than a lot of the content patches they've offered since then, with the exception of some of them that the ICC patch, perhaps in um, in Wrath of the Lich King, to an extent that is. Uh, the point here is what what do we have in terms of raids? We have High Mall. We have Blackrock Foundry and we have Hellfire Citadel. The problem? Well, beyond the fact that we have less raids, less raid bosses and all that, and they're using the idea of difficulty levels to basically do less content, and they've been doing this with every expansion. The worst raid they ever did, was, and where they introduced properly heroic raiding, was with a one room raid because they thought they could get away with being cheap with Trial of the Grand Crusader. And people hated that back then in Wrath of the Lich King. But it's not just that we have less raids, we have uh, less bosses, it's also in the past, before the raiding difficulties, before LFR, before the way it's, it's working, right now all the raids didn't become irrelevant. Now the only raid that's actually relevant in any way outside of LFR, like people only do the older raids like High Mall, Blackrock Foundry, really in LFR. There are some groups here and there very rarely for those raids, but uh, the vast majority, 99% of the raids organized outside of LFR are for Hellfire Citadel. So it's not that you just have less raids, but people have no reason to do the older raids. Whereas in the past, they did have reason. You would have people doing Karazhan. You did have people doing MacFarren. You did have people doing uh, Serpent Shrine Caverns, doing Tempest Keep. People, those raids didn't cease to, become, uh, to be relevant because because of the way the gear was set up. And yes, they did add badge gear, they did add catch-up mechanics eventually in uh, Burning Crusade, but that was later, that was not instantly. You, a raid didn't, see, didn't just cease to become relevant because a new one was added, and yet that's the situation that exists right now in World of Warcraft. When a new raiding tier comes out, the older raiding tier no longer matters. Just the point. I raided in Burning Crusade for a lot. For I don't know, close to close to the entire expansion's duration. Like uh, after I got max level, and I did a lot of Karazhan. Even when I was doing Tempest Keep and Serpent Shrine Caverns, I did a lot of Tempest Keep and Serpent Shrine Caverns when I was doing Mount Hyjal and Black Temple. I did a lot of Black Temple, far more so than probably I should have when I was raiding Sunwell. Again. Even when you had the town farm, but that it's not just about the people that have a town farm It's also the people uh, that are newer players that are or are coming back. They had stuff to do You know, they could go through that same journey. They could experience that they didn't miss out nowadays If you come back to the game later You barely do the older content. You just jump into the last tier of raiding so you, you you might say, oh, you have this amount of bosses because of all the raids put together, but in reality, you'll just have the Hellfire Citadel bosses. And that's the same situation that exists in Mists of Pandaria. Uh, because of the way that was set up. It's gotten worse and worse with every expansion. It really started to go downhill uh, with Wrath of the Lich King. And you know what's even worse than, than all of this? The leaps in terms of difficulty from uh, one raid difficulty to another. Going from LFR to normal raiding and then heroic raiding is massive. Because in LFR you don't have to deal with anything, you don't really have to care about mechanics. You're, you can just AFK or you can die and you'll still kill the boss, it doesn't matter. Whereas in 
proper rating, quote unquote, it does matter, right? Uh, in normal and heroic. Though, by the way, there's no difference in terms of dif in terms of mechanics between heroic and normal. It's just the difference in terms, uh, or some minor differences here and there, depending on the boss. Very few. Uh, for the most part, it's the exact same situation. It's just higher HP, higher damage, all that. So you just need better gear. That's all it boils down to. There are obviously bigger differences, far bigger differences in Mythic. But is it really worth doing? And going from LFR to Mythic is such a huge leap. And people are just not going to do it. They're not going to bother because why? Why go through all that effort? For what? Doing the same bosses you're doing on some slightly tweaked difficulty? Growing through that annoying process. Like, as someone who actually raided Heroic when that was the highest difficulty. Heroic Liching, Heroic Cataclysm in the first year. As someone does it, it's so unappealing to do it. <laughs> it's so unappealing. Partly because nowadays you have so many people playing on their alts, like people, you know, it's altcraft at the moment, you could call it altcraft. So many people playing on their alts that you don't even need a guild to finish everything outside of Mythic. You can pug it. Literally, you can pug it. Why? Because Mythic Raiders play on alts, they form pug groups, or people who, are keep, who farm heroic, farm normal, form pug groups, you join those pug groups, you just have to look at some guides online and you can f finish everything. It's not that exceptionally difficult. You have the tools at your disposal, you don't have to bother with the guild. And that does take a huge swing at the social aspect, because what's fun about raiding isn't just doing the content, it's not just the gameplay, it's the social aspect. It's sitting on TeamSpeak or Mumble or Discord or whatever you are, a voice chat program, talking with people from various nationalities, or various parts of, you know, depending on where you are in, the, uh, are in the world, various parts of the world. Socializing with people from around the world, that was one of the most appealing aspects about raiding, and yet you don't see it. There's no real incentive to actually join a guild, because if you can beat everything in the game outside of mythic difficulty, in pugs, what's the fucking point? And you can do it, and you might even do it a lot better than a lot of the guilds that can't do mythic well. And that's just the sad state of affairs that exists in World of Warcraft right now. Basically, what's bad about WoW right now is the non-raiding, non-dungeon experience is basically a shitty RPG where they're trying to go for some spectacle and fall flat on their face. And the raiding experience, just, you know, there's no incentive to socialize with people in a massively multiplayer online experience. And that's one of the main appeals of a game like this. The idea that you get to meet with people, socialize with people. Some of the best times I had playing older versions of WoW was socializing with people. And you might say, oh, people are so toxic. It's like, no, it's not the people. It's the way the game is set up. Play older WoW on private servers. You'll find that people socialize there in five-man groups. More so than they socialize in current WoW in raids where you can get 20, 30 people just making that point it's a reality of the situation of how it is right now it makes current wow very unappealing for all the reasons i just listed draenor what was a bigger failure than other expansions were not because of the rating aspect not because of the socializing aspect those issues have existed for a long time already for years but what made them more unappealing was the garrison aspect the fact they, you didn't really have anything to do outside of the garrison. That was the main drawback. But all the issues I listed have existed for a while and Blizzard doesn't care to fix them. Don't be surprised if Blizzard ever makes vanilla servers that they prove far more popular than current servers are. Or Legion. Like, imagine if they make vanilla a few months after Legion launches. That will va vanilla servers on live. That will probably prove far more popular than Legion will end up being. And if Blizzard doesn't realize what the issue is, then they've got a bloody problem on their hands. Costine here on Serious Gaming, signing out.